In the last episode of Truly Bedrock, we made a start on our storage auto-sorting system, and I'm pleased to say between episodes, I've been hard at work. This has taken absolutely forever, but I believe the sorting system is actually now complete. So we've got different sections through here for all of the different types of resources. As you can see, I still need to actually collect some of them, but this is all going to be nether stuff, and then we've got sort of ocean-y, sea-based stuff and random blocks, and I didn't mean to do that. Brilliant start to the episode, Beardstone. And then we've got our double section here for all the coloured stuff, and over this way, we've also added in a little bit more of a bridge, going all the way back round to the start of the storage system. And this is because we're going to be using this for other farms and things in future. But in total, we have three main sections for storing all of the different blocks and things, and then we've got a smaller section over here, which just auto-sorts the mob drops and and lighting and I've been very specific about what things I actually auto sort because I know what I'm going to be building this season I know what kind of resources I'm going to need so I know what kind of mess my shulker boxes are going to end up in and this has allowed me to make sure that I'm sorting out the blocks that I fully expect to end up all over my shulker boxes that's not to say this won't expand a little bit more in future though we've also got a network of pipes that run all the way around the entire thing going up down some of them are a little bit more convoluted than they needed to be but that was for aesthetic reasons and then we've got these bits where it flows off the edge we've got lots of dangly things under all the platforms and all in all i really do like how this area is coming together i've still got a bit of work to do to suspend this pipe from below these platforms but this is actually the main drop off system over here but over here we can load up all these chests we can dump shulkers and they will just automatically filter down go into a dropper down there which then spits the items out and make sure that they are spread out enough that we can actually get things sorted. It does mean the system isn't the fastest in the world because we're literally doing one item at a time from here, but it does mean the system doesn't get clogged. While I was building up this area though, we made a discovery and that discovery was down there and oh my, oh my. Um, I have a feeling I may, I may have flooded the spider farm. I guess maybe I should rectify that situation a little bit. Let's just shift a couple of these blocks over to here. There we go. That should get rid of at least the major flooding. Hmm. Didn't really think about that. But as I was just saying, we did make a discovery just over here. Let's have a look at what we found, shall we? I don't know yet. Uh, either way, hey, redstone shopping oh. in this season? Hello. Oh. Hi. Hello, Lee. Um, hey. What are you doing? Are, are you, you who lit things up in here, then? Yes, and I'm, I'm making a bit of a mess with water currently as well. Oh. Yeah. I, I see that. Oh. Oh, that's that's not natural mine shaft. Um, no, no, that's, oh. that, that's, that's, that's cave spider farm. Oh. Yeah. Fancy. What, what, what brings you oh, down ow. here, other than all the slimes? Well, the slimes are, are what are distracting me from trying to record a perfectly good clip. <laughs> Fair um, enough. There's so many slimes down there. Yeah. Um. I. Th th this. This. This gonna be my base. This. This cave gonna be my base. The. the, the this cave. Yeah. The, 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 this. This cave. This. Okay. Cave. Cool. Oh God! I had a mild panic attack there. I thought I built in your base. Oof. Oh. Oh no, I mean like, I wish that I was uh, adventurous enough to actually like do this whole cave here, but that's, that's, I don't even know what, if you have that much time. What I'm thinking is I'm, I'm going to be having some small farms in here, just like some of the small, like, you know, sheep farms, that sort of thing. And okay. you're basing right there, yeah? Yeah, so I'll, I'll keep them loaded for you. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't that wasn't what I was thinking. I like your thinking, but that wasn't what I was what I was gonna say. What I was gonna say was why don't we why don't we have like a little combined mini industrial type area thing? Just oh, you know, the, the small little passive farms like the the, the, the food farms and the, the you know just the little ones. And the slime farm apparently. Yeah, and yeah, um, pro probably a slime farm. Yeah. Um. No, I'd be down for that. I actually could use a space this big because I'm going to need a chorus fruit farm without any doubt. Ah, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that'll work. Well, I mean, but basically, lo long story short, there's there's going to be things hanging from the ceiling and then hanging from the things hanging from the ceiling, just Ooh. coming down from above. So, you know, That's if you want to work together on some farms and stuff, we can yeah. we can share the wealth. I would absolutely be down for that. That would be very Amazing. useful. 
Yay! I, I knew, like, when I saw that you were going to be my closest neighbor, I was like, oh, phew. Okay, yeah, I can work with with Beardy on stuff. He'll, mm -hmm. he'll be reasonable, and he's somebody that I can also just kill in combat if he isn't mm -hmm. being reasonable. So well, 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 now, well, well now. I believe, I believe <laughs> on your previous two attempts, uh, <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't quite come out well, did you, Lee? No, that's that's the curse Ooh. of not wearing, you know, full diamond at all times. Yeah, it's the gold pants, Lee. I mean, they look good, but they don't help you in a fight. Ah, oh, yes, but who's going to survive when the piglin overlords come back, huh? Huh? What? The, they're coming back? So it looks like we're going to have a neighbour, which is amazing. And that means that we can have a bit of a shared industrial district here, share some farms, and that actually looks really cool from below. I like that. Because what we're going to be doing up here, as I say, is having a few of the smaller farms. And I think the first one we're going to put in is probably going to be a sheep farm because we're going to be needing lots of wool up on the surface as well. And that's one thing we are not currently farming. However, that's not a job for today. We'll be saving that for a future episode. Today, we're heading back over to the industrial district. It turns out I actually quite miss it now that I've left. Between episodes, I have done a little bit of work over here. And as you can see, I've just sort of extended the base of this thing i mean building tower i don't even know but i've extended the base up just to get this all covered and now the entire bottom bit is looking a lot better i think but we've actually got a couple of new farms i want to add to this area today and that is to increase my emerald intake for the villagers so what we can also do if we have a look at what we've got down here is sell pumpkins and melons to the farmers and that's going to get us three times the emeralds from each farmer than what we're currently getting and that means that i can up my quartz output and my glass collection because once again they're things we're going to be needing a lot of in future so my thinking is we've got space around here we can put another ring of farms in around the base of what we've already got and I think that's where we're going to put our melon and pumpkin farms. But we do, of course, need to chunk align them. And that means they could end up a bit of a funky shape because we're kind of in between four separate chunks here. And these platforms here are within those four chunks. But obviously, I can't sort of cover up the middle bit. So we're going to end up with some L-shaped farms. But I think we can actually use that to our advantage and add some extra shape and definition to the tower as a result. So, I guess it's back to our storage center. Let's go grab some resources and figure out how we're going to do this. I think I've got what I need in order to make a start on this farm, and I've just put a bucket of water here to enable me to actually scale down the wall a little bit. But I'm going to start off just building one of the corner sections so we can get an idea of how this is going to work. And I guess we're going to be putting up with the sound of pistons for the next little while as well. So the first thing we need to do is just mark out the platform where this actually needs to go. And I guess we just kind of want to make sure we're chunk aligning it so i should probably get myself an armor stand set up really but i don't have one of those on me so away we go back to storage we should really consider getting some nether portals set up this weather is awful be a lot quicker too so if we just chuck this dude down here this should show us exactly where the chunks are and i can already tell actually i'm at one block too far over so i guess that's going to be the part of the platform for that side but we might as well get rid of it for now. It's just going to get in the way. And with that, we can see where the chunk is. And what we want to do is just put an outline on the whole chunk. Because it doesn't matter if this bit overhangs, but we want to make sure that the minecart itself, which is going to collect all the melons and pumpkins, actually stays within that chunk. Because if it goes across chunk boundaries, it can, of course, disappear. Because bedrock. Then when we get to this bit, we want to make sure that we are not going past that block there. We might get some stuff temporarily landing on these platforms, but once we've actually got the glass wall in, they won't be able to. So I guess the sooner we get that in, the better. Right, so that bottom layer is going to be the mine car, and then it's going to be dirt. And if we edge that with deep slate, that should cover that up a little bit nicer. And then the next bits are just going to be glass, because that's where we're going to be growing the pumpkins and, of course, destroying them so we can collect them. So I've got the basic shape in, and now I need to start planning. So, of course, this bottom layer is going to be the minecart rail, and we're going to want a drop-off point as well. So I think putting in a collection point here with some hoppers is going to be a wise choice. So that hopper there will change so it does eventually point downwards, but for the rest of these, I think we can pretty much just lead them all into that one. And there we go, that should be plenty to keep up with the farm next step rails so that should do it for the rails and i'm hoping that that is going to provide enough power going round but obviously i'm going to need to jump down here somewhere get those power cables in this is going to be an interesting one there we go getting the levers in is as simple as that the old water bucket trick strikes again the rail is in now just to test that it has enough power to send the minecart all the way around 
And that's absolutely fine. Excellent. So, on to the next step. So, we're going to have dirt layer there, and then we need the layer for the pumpkins and whatnot to grow. And then, of course, we need to start alternating pistons and observers. I think it makes sense to get the pistons in from down here, because that's going to make my life a lot easier. We've got all the pistons in place in a wonderful grid formation, but before we can get the observers in, it's going to make more sense for us to actually get the dirt in. The dirt blocks are in, and we've made our way above the pistons, but now we need to work out where we want to put the water sources. And I think we're probably only going to need three, maybe, to cover the whole farm. And we'll do that just by putting in a slab, and then waterlogging that directly. The next step is to get the plants in. So I'm going to quickly hoe all the right spots first. And now for planting the seeds. But what we're going to do for the best growth rates is actually alternate between melon seeds and pumpkin seeds. So this will be a row of melons, for example. And then this one will be a row of pumpkins. And so on. And for some reason, that seems to help them grow quicker. And then we'll bone meal all the stalks just to give it a bit of a head start. Then we apply some pistons looking down. And then above the water source blocks, we'll add some lights in. Lastly, we just need to do the redstone, and it's quite simple. We just put a dot on the back of every single one of the pistons. And then we put solid blocks on the gaps in between, which is primarily on the back of the observers, but also on the occasional lamp. And with that, I think the main part of the farm is complete. We just need to get some buttons on the top here so we can spawn proof it. And of course, we need to sort out the collection system because we currently don't have one. So I think it makes sense to sort out where we're going to be depositing the items into the sorting system first and the easiest way for us to do that is to just bust a pipe out the wall right here so that's what we're going to do and then a simple dropper dispenser system here that should spit everything out including all the random stuff that i dropped in there earlier excellent and then if we just turn this tunnel into a solid tunnel and it would probably help if we added some water at the far end that should in theory wash everything directly into my inventory right yeah not a good place to be standing but they should all now drop down and go straight into our sorting system which they are over there that is perfect and then we just need somewhere to collect all these bits and bobs and that is not redstone that is melon and we're going to get more melon than we are pumpkins because of course they come down whole melons come down in bits so this should roughly work out about right i should think no pumpkins yet but it does appear that the melons are pouring in already which is marvelous i really like the look of the pipe there as well actually that's come out quite well it's very simple it's quite sort of open and industrial looking but i think it does actually help to pull the top and the bottom halves of the buildings together. The plan, of course, is to have three more of these modules on the other corners, but I don't think we're going to be needing to farm any more of the melons and pumpkins. I kind of feel like this is probably going to be producing enough. Before we make any decisions, however, I think it'll be wise just to wait here, go AFK for a little while, just see how much it does actually produce, because if it's more than we need, then of course, I mean, look, it's, it's pretty much constantly firing, but if it is more than we need, then we can at least know we don't need to build any more of them. And that means we can make use of other farms in the other three corners. Let's just see how we get on, shall we? Well, it's been running for about 15 minutes and I've not quite got a stack of pumpkins, but I've got a lot of melon. However, I think we can probably squeeze in another farm and double our output because when we're over here, we're mainly going to be trading with villagers. And that means most of the time we're over here, we're going to want to be selling these things unless we're doing an actual AFK session. But we've done a lot of that and our mob farm is, well, let's just say we're not going to run out of resources from that anytime soon. And of course, we've still got plenty of building to do over here as well. But I think adding another one of these modules right next to it would not necessarily be a bad thing. But there's no point standing around chatting about it. I might as well just get on with it. Shortest montage ever. But we have now got the second farm up and running. It hasn't quite fully grown all the stalks. I didn't bone meal them this time because I forgot. But it has been running for about half an hour or so since I finished. And I want to go down and check on the rates and see what we're actually getting. Just before we get down there, however, you'll see on the side here, I actually connected the second pipe to the first one. And aesthetically, I think that looks really nice. I like that. And we'll probably do something similar on the other side when we get to it. But first things first, let's have a look at our goodies. So that's almost five stacks of pumpkins and almost a chest full of melon slices. And that is in about 30 to 40 minutes. So yeah, I'd say that's probably going to keep up with our needs. We're definitely going to end up with too many. So the next thing to do is to figure out the next two corners i want to do the same shape farm i want to do something that uses pipes like this one i do want it to be symmetrical i think but i don't know what those farms are going to be so i'm going to think about that in between episodes and if you've got any ideas please do let me know in the comments we've still got plenty of space over here but i will see you all on the next one bye bye now